Well, oh, okay. Well, we've got a visual glitch that will be fixed. <laughs> fixed by the next match. We've got Austin Theory starting off this tournament for the Ring of Honor World Championship. This is NWA presents Ring of Honor. Austin Theory's been selected by William Regal, who is currently the general manager of both brands. Uh, he's been selected to start off the first match of this tournament. And Austin Theory is going to be taking on a man returning to universe mode right now. He's not been seen. He's not been seen since the days of NXT. Dolph Ziggler, who is a former NXT World Champion and one of the best NXT World Champions we ever had during the uh, the birthdays of NXT. I'm not talking last season. I'm talking the old days of Universe Mode. Dolph Ziggler is a threat to be to be reckoned with. <laughs> threat to be reckoned with? A threat to be reckoned with. Okay, here we go. Whoa, and a famous uh, right off the bat there by Ziggler. Ziggler who has been away from Universe Mode since losing the NXT Championship many moons ago. Oh! After we stopped doing the NXT brand initially, uh, Dolph Ziggler was kind of just pushed aside and let to go do his own things, let out into the wild. But now he's back with an opportunity to lead Ring of Honor. But first he's got to get past Dolph Ziggler. Uh, he's got to get past Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> he is Dolph Ziggler. He's got to get past Austin Theory and vice versa. And, uh, of course, even if they make it through this match, they've then still got to go through the rest of the tournament. We're starting off tonight with a tournament match, and we're ending tonight with a tournament match. Oh my god, and we're going to be advancing, advancing some of the other divisions as we go. We've also got singles debut of Caden Carter, who made her debut in the Power Rumble, along with Gigi Dolan who also made her debut in the Power Rumble. We're going to be seeing those two go head-to-head -head later on tonight, as well as some tag team action. Got a drop kick to the back of Ziggler. Fairy has managed to get back into this thing. Ziggler started off with a lot of offense early on in this match. Nice fisherman suplex there from Fairy. Fairy who is, well, he's been kind of struggling to get back into the main picture of things. But now with the Ring of Honor Pure Championship and the Ring of Honor Television Championship apparent, then even if he fails here tonight, we could see him challenge for one of those in the future. Definitely would not be against seeing Austin Fury versus Johnny Gargano for the television belt. That would be a very, very nice match. Ziggler now dropping down Fury and going for the pinfall. Quick kick out from Fury and Fury's back to his feet. Ziggler's back quicker though. Oh, and catches him in a power slam. Oh, oh my god, and Fairy popped up, hit him with that pump kick. Took Ziggler down, and Ziggler had to uh, take a moment to breathe for, <laughs> for a second. Oh my god, and a spinning brain buster. Fairy trying to stay on top of Ziggler right now. Big right hook takes him down, and while Ziggler's down, Fairy on top with some aggression. Oh, and Fairy just took down the ref. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. ATL from Fairy. Good grief. Oh, followed by a low blow. That's why he took down the referee. And now Fairy with his finisher to Ziggler. And now going for the pinfall, but the ref is still down. He took down the referee. He maybe should have thought about that beforehand. <laughs> he said he doesn't care. Fine. He'll do this the legit way, I guess. Fairy, got to be a little bit smarter when it comes to playing dirty. And Ziggler trying to recruit. Recruit? <laughs> trying to retreat. To the outside of the ring. 
Fury is right on top of him. That low blow has really done a number on Ziggler. Referee's back to his feet. Does not know how he got taken down. Oh, kick to the midsection. That looked like a low blow. Ataxia to Ziggler. Fury now one, two, and that is it. Austin Fury, after the low blow and two finishes, puts away Dolph Ziggler, having to play dirty to get the win. But he advances to the next round. Hey, and the stage is fixed. Just like that. Like magic. We just had a bit of a production error. Error? Error? Anyway, the Ring of Honor television champion Johnny Gargano is going to be competing tonight. He was the Super Junior Champion. That division's been swapped out now for the television division. The television division. <laughs> Uh, this championship will be put on the line primarily on shows, which is pretty much what the Super Junior was anyway towards the end of last season. And Gargano the champ is going to be taking on relative newcomer Axiom, making his Ring of Honor debut here tonight for Universe Mode. We're going to be seeing here tonight if Axiom can get... A big win in his debut, and Gargano right off the bat with a lariat takes down Axiom. And a quick kick out. Oh my god, Axiom previously competed on the UK independent scene. One of the standout performers from the UK independent scene. Oh my god, and a drop toe hold there. Takes down Gargano. I don't know what Gargano was saying. Up for catches him in the German suplex. Oh, and a Superman punch. We don't have too many luchadors on the brand currently, or at least we didn't towards the end of last season. It'll be interesting to see if we get any new, new signees. But Axiom will be hopefully a regular, depending on how well this match goes. It is a non-title match against the champion. Pele kick there takes the champ down. Oh my god. And he bounces off the ropes. Springboard crossbody takes down Gargano. You see Champa there at ringside. Members of the tag team DIY. It'd be interesting to see whether or not they make themselves more prevalent in the tag division moving forward. And Gargano possibly going for a shining wizard, but got taken down again there by Axiom. And Axiom giving time for Gargano to recover. Wants to fight Gargano while he's on his feet. Pop up drop kick. Axiom is one step ahead of Gargano here. And bouncing off the ropes. Suicide dive, but Gargano dodged out the way. Axiom got none of it. Just a full face plant on that mat. Big body flop. I want to know what damage that did to him, but he's fighting back. Hit it. Gargano with a Pele again. He's recovered quite well, considering he crashed and burned just then. Targeting the armor, Gargano. Gargano mostly spent his time as champion battling off United Empire, but with the Empire fractured right now, they've got a little bit of a uh, a job trying to wrangle Ilya Dragunov than target Gargano's championship. A count of eight now. And Axiom forced to retreat to the ring to avoid getting counted out. Oh, and the Lariat takes down Axiom when he was going for that Pele kick again and a quick kick out there. And the newest luchador on the NWA. Pele takes down Gargano, but Gargano doesn't get down to his back. He just drops to his backside. Laria in the corner, and now Tornado DDT plants Gargano. Axiom's on fire right now, looking to put away the champion's debut. Oh my god, and the two collided for a moment. Oh, Axiom went for some on the ropes, but Gargano caught him with a neckbreaker before he could get there. Oh my god, and a quick jab. Oh, a nice arm drag into a drop kick. Bloody hell. Axiom almost taken off there. Oh, I don't know what he went for, but Gargano moved out of the way. Hit him with that elbow drop. And then the basement drop kick. Axiom's down. That was a rough hit that Axiom took. 
after missing what looked like a single leg drop kick or an enziguri of some kind, I don't quite know, Gargano now dropping him down, looking for the escape, the Gargano escape, Axiom trying to hold on, he's put on a great performance so far, and it looks like it's going to continue, knees to, <laughs> knees to the back of the head, bloody hell, oh and a takedown, Axiom caught Gargano Fisherman Suplex almost kept the leg hooked but decided against it instead getting Gargano back to his feet Oh and Gargano got both feet up into the chin of Axiom Axiom rolls through from the sidewalk slam roll up one two and Gargano kicks out Holy shit, oh my god, and a discus lariat turns Axiom inside out. The luchador's down. Oh my god, and almost enough to put Axiom away. Holy shit, and now with Axiom grounded, but his legs are under the rope. His legs are under the rope, referee can't see, and he's forced to tap. Gargano got a submission win over Axiom, but he did technically have a rope break. It's an interesting decision there by the referee, unless he didn't see it, but Gargano thinks he won legit. Unfortunate outcome there for Axiom. Next up is the women's match that I mentioned earlier tonight with the debut of Toxic Attraction, Gigi Dolan going to be making her in-ring debut tonight accompanied by JC Jane. Dolan making her Universe Mode debut, we've never seen Dolan around before even with a different name, surprisingly. Dolan's going to be taking on Caden Carter, who again, making her debut, uh, at least singles debut. She had a fantastic performance in the Power Rumble. So here we go, Toxic Attraction. Going after Caden Carter here tonight. Carter looking to pick up a win. Get some momentum moving forward, and Dolan starts off with... Some brutal four-round strikes. There's been a lot of new uh, women's division superstars making their way towards the NWA as of late. From all around the globe, independent scenes all over the world. Women are flocking to the NWA right now after the fantastic performances of the women last season. A lot of dream matches wanting to take place, so we'll see what happens in the future. Oh my god, and I would love to do an NWA Empower pay-per-view at some point, which would obviously be a, a women's only pay-per-view to showcase the sheer amount of female talent we have, but no confirmation on that just yet, it's just all Things that would be pretty cool to have this season. Oh my god, and a big boot from Dolan to Carter. There's been rumours about whether or not with Ring of Honor being a little bit different from NWA. Obviously, NWA is hosting Ring of, uh, Ring of Honor right now, but... Last season, NWA USA got its own championship and such, and Ring of Honor doing the same. Will we see a brand split? Will we see an official brand split this season? It's going to be interesting. We would obviously need to get another general manager. And uh, each show would need to have its own championships. So it's interesting to see whether or not, you know, will we have Ring of Honor tag champions at some point? Will we have a Ring of Honor women's division? And then will that continue through to next season? Or will there always be an interchangeable show? Carter taking the fight to Dolan, kicking her in the thigh just then, and now lifting her up. Fireman's carry Snake Eyes on the top turnbuckle there. Carter getting a full head of steam. Oh my god, the face wash in the corner. Big boot to the cheek of Dolan. And Dolan trying to fight back. Carter retreating out of the ring needs a moment. 
Oh, Dolan catches Carter with the jawbreaker there. And now the Black Widow submission on Carter. Wrapping around her like a, like a, I don't even know, like a snake. <laughs> Bloody hell. Oh, went for a roundhouse kick, but Carter stopped her before she could get her foot off the ground. Whoa, and both women collided for a moment there. Gigi Dolan came out on top. Oh, and an STO takes down Carter, with Carter grounded a forearm strike right to the face. Good grief, and now Dolan lifting up Carter. Carter with a reversal snap, reverse DDT. Takes Dolan down to the mat. Oh my god, and a brutal knee strike. Dolan catches Carter. GG driver. One, two, and that is it, Dolan. She looked like she was in trouble for a moment there, but managed to catch Carter in her offense and hit her with that GG driver. Dolan picks up a win in her debut, but great performance there by Carter. Next up, we've got some tag division action before we get to the other match in that opening bracket. Listen, we ain't talking about the logo, okay? <laughs> I don't care if it's not changing. Santos Escobar, who is back with the NWA. After a bit of a rocky start last season, he briefly feuded in the Super Junior Division, unable to actually pick up too many wins. But he's here with Legado Del Fantasma, Del Toro and Wild. Yes, yes. I forgot that he's changed his name. And they're looking to make an impact in the tag division. Crowd firmly behind Legado Del Fantasma, but they're also behind the Creed brothers. Brutus and Julius Creed who had a uh, fantastic debut match on the first episode of NWA Power, managed to pick up the win against uh, Alpha Academy. So here we go. Legado Del Fantasma going up against the Creeds with Escobar at ringside there. We don't have the other half of the bracket confirmed for the Ring of Honor Championship. It could be interesting to see Escobar in that championship, perhaps. That championship tournament. Oh my god, and a kick to the side of the head of Julius Creed. Right off the bat, Cruz del Toro with some brutal offense. And immediately sending Julius Creed into the corner where... Whacking Wild is waiting for him. That hot shot off the top rope, not enough to get disqualified, thankfully. Of course, on the last episode of NWA Power, we saw Maximum Male Models pick up a win against Los Lafarios, Angel Garza, and uh, Humberto Carrillo. Oh my god, the strength of Julius Creed with one hand launching... Del Toro into the ring and a beautiful, beautiful bullplex there. He stopped for a moment in midair and Del Toro gets a quick kick out. Tag made to Joaquin Wild. And a low body blow there from Wild. Kick to the midsection. Legado Del Fantasma, again, they, they struggled quite a bit last season with picking up wins, but they had some great performances, especially towards the end with their feud with TMDK, a very brief feud. But it led to them missing out on appearing at NWA Starcade. And Legado Del Fantasma coming back into the tag division with a little bit of uh, a relit flame. Oh my god. Lariat takes down Julius Creed. Brutal forearm strikes and a drop kick there takes him down. The Creed brothers really, really struggling to uh, stay on top of Legado Del Fantasma here tonight. Basement drop kick in the corner takes down Julius. You gotta wonder 
Do they have a little bit of performance anxiety? Oh my god, after that strong first showing, they've got high expectations now in the tag division. But let's not forget that during that initial match between the Creeds and uh, Alpha Academy, the Creeds struggle a lot to put away Alpha Academy. And Alpha Academy are a team that's been around in the NWA since the beginning and have challenged for the tag belt. So it was quite a challenge for a debut match. Of course, Chad Gable of Alpha Academy has claimed that that win was purely just a fluke and that the Creed Brothers, according to him, aren't worth shit. Tag made to Brutus Creed. Bit more of a heavy hitter. Bit more of a powerhouse than Julius Creed. Going after the arm of Del Toro. Of uh, Wild, rather. I'm never ever going to remember both of their names. And now they've changed them so it's even more difficult. Good grief. What a drop kick and Brutus barely flinches from that drop kick, but he gets taken down by the Hurricane Rana. There was no way he was staying up from that one. Oh my god, and he just blocked Wild from doing something. Snapmare Driver takes down Brutus Creed brutally. Oh, Atomic Drop. Into the Wild thing. And now, Tag made to Cruz del Toro. Looking to pick up the pieces of Brutus Creed. Oh, and a roundhouse kick takes him down. Good grief. Legado del Fantasma did not come to play this season. And a driver in the middle of the ring. Calling for Brutus to get to his feet. Legado del Fantasma looking to put him away, but Brutus caught the Enziguri. Oh my god. The aggression of Brutus Creed. Del Toro keeping Julius in that corner. Quick jab. And look at Wild taking advantage. Another hot shot. Legado del Fantasma playing dirty. Standing, shooting. It Was it a shooting star? It was a shooting star. Bloody hell. Oh, followed by the roundhouse kick. And a tag made now to Wild. And Creed is trying to make the tag. And he does. He makes the hot tag. Oh my god. And Wild catches Creed with that Rolling Thunder code breaker, followed by the super kick. Creed doesn't go down though. Good grief, Creed is fighting back. That super kick, he just sponged it. Oh my god. Look at those hammer strikes. Wild is down, what a beating. Trying to get back to his feet. Oh, and he got his knees up on the senton. Catches him in the Rana, good grief. <laughs> this has been brutal. And a big splash there against Brutus. Wild had to slow things down for a brief second there, not moving as quick as he usually would. He's taken a bit of a beating. There's a Northern Light suplex. And he's going for the rope break, but his tag partner, Del Toro, breaks it up. On oh, Del Toro, Del Toro with a possum pin. But referee's been distracted by his tag partner. I don't think Wild meant to. Holy shit. Oh, and a big axe handle. Almost wipes out Del Toro. Oh, and the Enziguri takes down Julius Creed. He was distracted. One, two. And Julius Creed just kicked out. How in the world? Legado del Fantasma trying to pull everything out of the bag here to pick up the win. Del Toro bringing Julius back to his feet and Julius trying to fight back. He's having a struggle though. Oh, oh, what is this? Springboard off the side into the arm drag. Very nice. Oh, followed by the drop kick. And now targeting Brutus again. They're realizing that they need to keep Brutus off the side of the ring in order to section off the Creed brothers. 
Uh oh, uh oh. Julius goes up into the driver. And now Del Toro setting up again for possibly another Enziguri. Oh my god, and almost takes the nose off of Julius's face. And Legado Del Fantasma, Brutus was just a second too late. They've managed to pick up the win. So the second match out of the four initial uh, tournament matches and we've got the Ring of Honor Pure Champion, Pete Dunne, accompanied there by Noam Dar who hoofed Ilya Dragunov in the balls at the end of the, uh, the last Power episode, but he was the United States Champion, now the Pure Champion of Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor's mid-card belt, and he's going to be competing to upgrade to the Ring of Honor World Championship here tonight. And a huge, huge return. We have not seen Cody Rhodes since the start of last season. He became interim general manager and replaced William Regal briefly and during that time he sold NXT to the NWA. He's the entire reason that the NWA is even in universe mode right now. They acquired all of the NXT assets. Cody Rhodes won the national belt from Austin Theory before losing it back to Austin Theory. And then Cody left to go do a reality TV show. Cody Rhodes has said that that was a mistake and that his, his heart lies with professional wrestling and he's coming back to win the World Championship, whether that's for Ring of Honor, whether that's for the NWA, he wants a world title. So here we go for the first time, Pete Dunne, Cody Rhodes, oh, and right off the bat. Pete Dunn went straight after the arm of Cody. Snap suplex as well. Taking the fight to Rhodes. Pete Dunn knows what kind of a threat Cody Rhodes is right now. One of the biggest names in professional wrestling. And Pete Dunn is staying on top of Rhodes. Keeping the offense. Oh my god. Cody Rhodes. Definitely uh, being given a second chance considering what happened last time. He took advantage of the fact that William Regal was out after an injury that was brought on by Cody Rhodes' friends, the Young Bucks. Matt and Nick Jackson, they attacked William Regal backstage, opening up the position for an interim GM while William Regal was injured. And that's where Cody Rhodes took advantage. And then, of course, we had... The GM versus GM feud through Bash at the Beach of last season, where Cody Rhodes won, brought in NXT 2.0, and then sold NXT to the NWA. William Regal was reinstated as general manager after Rhodes left. And now Rhodes is back in less of a corporate position, wanting to pick up wins within the ring rather than behind the scenes. And Pete Dunne being clever about this, getting to the outside. Pete Dunne is the stand-in leader right now for the United Empire with Will Ospreay being away. Oh my god, jab to the elbow, uh, jab to the elbow, elbow to the face! Oh my god, and a lariat from Rhodes takes down Dunne. Forearm strike in the corner there from Rhodes. The American Nightmare has been on top of the Bruiserweight. Since managing to first get his offense in, Pete Dunne was on the nightmare right off the bat, but then Cody Rhodes managed to get some offense in has been on top since. This brawl has spewed to the outside here in tonight's main event. What is this? Oh my god, and a swinging suplex on the outside. Pete Dunne looking to possibly injure Cody Rhodes. And another... Cody almost crumpled into those steel steps. Ooh, kick to the midsection. Oh, followed by the slap. 
And Cody now happy to take the fight to the outside. Butterfly set up. Looking for a power bomb. Oh my god, and the bruiserweight rolled through into a Rana. We're at a count of six, now seven. These men have got to get back in the ring. And Cody Rhodes has just realised it. Pete Dunne taking his time for a moment there to follow. Oh my god, Enziguri fails to take down Rhodes. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Dark matter there from Rhodes. And Noam Dar getting involved there. Yelling something at Cody. No idea what he's trying to distract Rhodes with. And Dar's being issued a warning from the referee. No more interfering. Stay on the outside. No more interfering. Because of course, this is for the championship. We don't want any kind of any kind of interference any kind of false finishes no disqualifications or count outs this is supposed to be legit it's a, a tournament for a world championship it's going to be on the same level as the nwa world heavyweight championship and will be the standard until will osprey returns with the uh, nwa world heavyweight championship quick pinfall attempt but cody rhodes with the kick out early on there Kick to the midsection, followed by the kick to the head. Oh, good grief, and a Cobra Clutch slam there. Pete Dunn got some height off of the mat. Dunn trying to get Cody Rhodes into the corner there, towards that turnbuckle. Cody's not having any of it. Sends Dunn into the opposing turnbuckle, now going up top. Where in the world are they going? And Dunn quickly crumples down I think uh, both by choice and against his will there I don't think he meant to but it helped him uh oh uh oh Rhodes top rope Rana takes down Dunn look at Cody getting all fired up holy shit and just as he was about to set up for the finish Noam Dar with the distraction again he's really been issued one warning referee's got to get him out of here no referee letting him off. Letting the supernova off. And the Lariat takes down Rhodes as Pete Dunne tries to capitalise. And Noam Dar throwing a chair into the ring. What in the world? The Empire can't keep getting away with dirty underhanded tactics like this. And with Rhodes grounded, Pete Dunne with that wrist trapped. Delivering kicks and punches to Rhodes. Oh my god, twisting the hand now. Oh, and a double knees to the spine. Pete Dunne going for the pin. And a quick kick out again from Rhodes. Rhodes who looks pretty pissed off. Kick to the midsection, followed by the kick to the head. Oh, and a bulldog. And he spotted that chair, but he went to grab it and da. Dar just yelled something to him. Oh my god, and he blocked the attack there from Pete Dunne. And another Dark Matter to the Bruiserweight. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, Disaster Kick takes down Dunne. And Dunne is grounded. The Bruiserweight's down. And Cody's got that chair. He can't use it otherwise he'll be disqualified unless it gets used in a way that isn't direct. Catch is done with a power slam and referee quick to uh, to try and get rid of that. Holy shit. Ooh. <laughs> oh, Cody decided not to. Giving Dunn a moment to get into the ring. Uh oh, uh oh, and he baited him anyway. Crossroads to Pete Dunn. Referee was disposing of that chair. One, two, and Pete done with the kick out. Oh, and referee just got taken down. Pete Dunn dodged out the way of that lariat. And Cody accidentally just hit the referee. Oh my god. Blocking the, the bitter end. Oh, and a five star forearm. Pete Dunn takes down Cody. Neither man is going for... The chair. The chair's been disposed of. No one Dar happy to get involved again, though. Oh my god, and Dar didn't get out of the way in time. Cody with the suplex on the outside. Holy shit. 
Looking for a kendo stick, but referee's back up. What is he doing? What is he looking for? Oh, ripcord. No. Oh, DDT on the tip of that kendo. Holy shit. Pete done with the DDT on the kendo stick. Sends Cody Rhodes back into the ring. Cody's right back to his feet. Taking a moment to recuperate here. This has been a close match. For the entirety of it. Catches him in the monkey flip. Rhodes goes over his head. Uh oh, Pete Dunn. Oh, and Cody blocked it. Catch is done. Into the crossroads. Crossroads to Pete Dunn. Holy shit. And now looking for another crossroads. One, two, and that is it. Cody Rhodes with two crossroads in a row. And Dar looks devastated at ringside, but the Empire don't get an opportunity to advance in this Ring of Honor tournament.